Okay, good afternoon everybody. Ready? Uh, okay, before I start my class, uh, maybe I have a few announcements. So I give an extension for the first uh, quiz. And also, whoever missed some point in first quiz, I am giving, I will give an, another chance. So please send me an email if you need to take it again. And yeah, you see the syllabus, there are some quizzes and there are some tests. Okay, so I can extend quizzes, extend time, deadline for quizzes, okay, but not for tests. Please remember that. I have access to extend quizzes, deadline, but not tests, because tests will be centralized for many, uh, a number of uh, instructors. So please remember. Okay. And, oh, and, and there is a, uh, I did a mistake because in the syllabus, actually not for me, in the syllabus, the schedule our, was the, in the first, fourth version of the syllabus that I, that I uploaded earlier, that has on the schedule space, there was a, some mistake. So I uploaded a new version, version 5th of the syllabus today. So please get the new version of the syllabus. We will follow that. And for this course, you know, there are, there are a lot of stuff I like you to review. And especially, and then I'm teaching other class, CS1, CS1, 1321, and this class, and I'm also teaching in another class, like online class, that I like personally, I like to share my content lectures that I'm giving, delivering to my online students. And if you do not have any problem, if nobody has any, any restriction, then I like to share this class content to my online students. Is anybody here has any problem? If I share this class content to uh, some online students that are, that are taking, okay. Okay, thank you. And in the weekend, uh, actually I'm spending some time to uh, make some videos because uh, I don't like, I like everybody to know this, but I don't like to spend my class time to doing this, to do this, because for instance, something like I think uh, it, that will be useful for liking Git and GitHub. So I have already uh, uh, maybe downloaded seven, eight, recorded seven, eight videos of how to install Git and how to create account on GitHub. And then I think everybody has GitHub account, right? Is anybody here does not have GitHub account? Okay. And then, uh, so please do some practice. See the mistake? Oh, maybe. Uh, Oh, sorry, it is messed up. I'm so sorry. Mm, I will do that later. Okay. So if you please watch this video, so then if you practice sometime, you will be used to in using GitHub. Okay. And so, so please do some practice. And I think this is very easy. You know, if you spend few hours in the weekend, even this weekend, then in the upcoming weekend, you will be, upcoming classes, you will be able to start using Git. 
because in this class I will be using GitHub. I will be using my uh, I will save my program on my GitHub account. So you don't. So if you become used to in using GitHub, so you don't need to type in your uh, program code. Then it will be relaxed, and then you can spend. Uh, you can give more attention in my lecture. And another thing, maybe there is an interesting thing. I like everybody to uh, uh, focus one. Uh, that is a pseudocode. How to write pseudocode? Some of the some students I expected that student who took uh, any computer science class, like uh, CS1 class. If you take any CS1 class, you should know how to write pseudocode. There is a good page on first year experience website on a, a good resource. So please go over there and please. Yeah, so please uh, go to the past year experience research page and then uh, do some practice. And I have also uh, uh, made some videos over here. So then uh, I describe actually how to write a good pseudo course with some examples. Okay. So there is no uh, straightforward rule for writing pseudo code, but there are some unified guidelines that you have to follow. So when you write your pseudocode, then it will be easy for you. For instance, this is the, a program that it says to find the minimum of three numbers. Okay, so if you, if you understand this, you will be able to find the minimum of 30 numbers, 300 numbers. No problem. But definitely we can improve this pseudocode by, with an uh, uh, array concept or procedure concept. Maybe I will do other videos to do this thing with procedures and with uh, hmm, arrays. That means while writing pseudocode or while writing program, we can use multiple ways. Sometimes we can use array, sometimes we can avoid array, sometimes we can use procedures. For instance, if you want to drive from here to Atlanta uh, to downtown, you can go to uh, multiple routes, right? You can, you can go through freeway or you can avoid freeway. That depends on situation. Say similarly. And maybe the last thing I like everybody to be familiar with, that is the data type and uh, data type and introduction to type system and how data, when you declare variable, how data are stored in computer memory. Uh, I was trying to teach that last on last class. Teaching here and then it is difficult. So if I type in board on board over here, maybe uh, you have to write note. But I think if I give you video, then you will be it will be easy for you. And sometimes if I do mistake, then you can, I can edit my video. I can change it. But it's difficult here. It's time consuming. So these things I like everybody to understand. Because if you do not understand this thing, then really it will be difficult for you to, uh, to do program. Like for instance, for this class, a few minutes, I want to spend a few minutes to uh, do. You know, whoever, I have my uh, GitHub account. For instance, in my GitHub account, I have GitHub. Yes. <coughs> Anybody here who use a uh, GitHub for a while? You? And you? Can you please uh, tell us the some advantages of using GitHub? Um, so GitHub is a version control system. So it's an easy way to control versions of your code, essentially. And it's a good way to diagnose who writes what code in the team. Okay, how difficult the learning curve? Really easy, right? How how many hours or how many days someone needs? Who never care about it? Thirty minutes. Thirty minutes. <laughs> okay, that's good. You are uh, smart enough. Okay, smarter than me. It took me some time even to uh, understand because GitHub there are a lot of commands. Still, I don't know everything, but I, I as I know something, whenever I need something, I can do Google search. And I can find out that, that I do not know. Yes. Yes. 
Yeah. So do you you recommend everybody to learn this? Do you recommend everybody to learn GitHub? Well, yeah, you have to learn it to like work. Like all the internships that I've done, like if you don't know GitHub, like it's just really you're gonna like cry and struggle. But so you might as well like learn. Okay, so you see, so I like everybody to learn GitHub in this semester. Okay, although it is not my course content. Okay, this is why I cannot enforce you. I cannot make it uh, compulsory, but I like to request everybody please follow my advisement and learn GitHub. So for instance, if you learn GitHub, then what do we use if I, for me that you see that I work on some uh, programs uh, so I, early today at my home and in my previous class with C21 uh, plus. So I have some programs over here. You see, so I have some in my GitHub repository, for instance, this is a brand new GitHub repository. It has six repositories. In GitHub, we say repository, but in Eclipse, we say project. Same thing. Project and repository, in a shortcut, we say repo. Okay, so repo, I have five repositories over here. So this one and this one and this one, these are different than this one. Because this one is brand new, it has no programs in it. But this has a Java program, it has some Java programs, and it has uh, Python programs, and it has some Java programs. But for this one, it has start to Maybe maybe two people like this, like is is like a social media. So when someone posts on something on YouTube, you click on like button. They're so like similar. Okay, so the, the advantage of that, so I have my code over here. So on my GitHub account, so I will click over here and then I will click over here. I will copy this URL and then I will go to actually I don't have this project seen on my Eclipse. I want to import my GitHub project to my Eclipse. See that how easy it is. It, it, it will take by that one minute. I will go to CD, W, then tab, off space folder. I will write one line command, git space clone. Then I will put shift insert or control V. Then I will get this address of my GitHub repository. You see? Then once I press enter, you see how how long I take. Less than a few seconds, less than uh, maybe three seconds. If it is a large project, that it will take some time. Now I have my project downloaded over here in this workspace folder. You see, if I go to my workspace folder, users, and then this is my account and then users folder. You see, this this has been copied a few seconds ago. Now a minute ago, 6.48 and now 6.49 a minute ago, right? So now what I will do, I need just this address, this path, then I can do, I will import this project to my, uh, to my Eclipse. So I will click on file and I know it is a Java project, so I will click on import and then I will click on general, then I will select on existing Java, existing project into Workspace, the general Java project, text next, then click on browse, then on this browse button I have my already my Workspace folder and then I will select this Workspace folder and I will select this folder and as soon as I select it, you see this is my project, over here this is selected and I, you know, if I finish it, look at what happens within a second. You see, once it is done 100%, then you will see that my project is here. My local project is CAC 1321, 21 review, and this is the GitHub project name within, within angle brackets. This is the GitHub repository name, and this project, it shows that it is connected with my master branch of my GitHub project. So my GitHub project has only one branch right now, master branch. So this is uh, here. We need branch if we want to, if we work, when we work multiple people in a team. Usually when multiple people work in a team, in a company or in a project, then everybody usually create, uh, creates their own branch and after work, doing some improvement or work, we merge the branch or we uh, push code from one branch to another branch. This is how someone's uh, like uh, one developer's code uh, 
uh, are being separated from another developer source and as well as everybody can see who has done this okay in order to get like appreciation who has done this and even someone if someone can mistake can if someone if someone does a mistake then we can see that who does that mistake and if we need to go back to a to a previous version even previous few years back is easy to do like a single comment right okay so i have like almost uh, i have uh, recorded that few so far one third of the video like eight nine videos if i make another eight nine videos then almost all uh, github uh, git commands will be covered so maybe within the within this semester i will be able but if someone wants to do volunteer with me please welcome i will welcome and then please let us work together so you see this project i have eight commits that means i have comment i have made a changes on this project eight times so now i can see that i have ordered my commits every commit has its own commit id so using this commit id i can go back to this position so if i want to go a three days three days back then i can do it and also that yeah there are multiple users can work on a project and then manager or we can see who has completed this uh, accomplished this this task uh, so okay so my project is even here i just want to review i will not go through in depth so uh, so if it's uh, as you know the byte type byte type has one one byte or eight bit memories, eight bit length. When you declare a variable of byte type, it takes one byte memory space. So within one byte, byte type, byte, short, integer, long, these are signed, signed uh, number system. That means you can put either plus or minus sign, right? For signed number, we say that you can, for positive number, we uh, avoid positive sign, but negative for negative numbers, we must give sign. At the beginning, so so within uh, actually I have explained this in in the video. So if you go, uh, <laughs> for instance, in this video I have explained how uh, like for instance byte type variables byte type you don't need to know in depth of this okay but if you know I, I i know this because while i was writing my book i had to know this then i knew this and then i drew picture and i uh, wrote in my book this is why i know but everybody does not know that but many people think that it is i'm killing it. but if you know it one time it will be a uh, good for you to get in-depth knowledge of uh, programming how computer program works so for a byte type a we have eight by eight bits the leftmost bit or bit seven is used for storing the sign for a positive number this bit is zero and then for a negative number this bit is used as one and then other say remaining seven bits are used to hold data so if you have seven bits then you have you can have the maximum number positive number seven one then that number will be two to the power seven minus one equal to one hundred twenty seven but for a negative number you know do you know anybody how negative number are stored in computer memory anybody knows two's complement one's complement form two's complement form you had that yes left most significant bit is set to one all negative numbers are stored in computer memory is two's complemented form two's complement form equal to how it is calculated so when you have a binary number you can find this one's complement form by just rever reversing changing the bit zero to one and one to zero like for instance if you have a binary number like this is my original byte number zero one zero one one zero one. For instance, this is my binary number. For instance, this is this regular number. Then one complement form. 
one's complement form equal to will be this bit one it will be zero this bit one zero it will be one this bit one it will be uh, sorry. sorry zero one zero one zero yes uh, I think it will be nice for me if I write over here so if I regular if the regular number is one zero one Okay, it's a regular number. Then one's complement form will be one's complement form. One's complement form will be zero one zero. Just reverse the byte bit. Every bit reverse. Okay, easy, right? Then two's complement form is calculated just by adding one with the one's complement form. So if you add one, so then it will be one zero and one. This one will be 1 and this 0 will be 0. So my original number is this. This is my original number, 101. If it is a negative number, then in computer system, in memory system, it is stored as this. It's two's complement form. It is, but all positive numbers are stored in computer system in regular form. Whatever the number, if it is a positive number, then it will be stored like as this. This, this is the number. So like at, at least it takes one one memory byte. Okay, so then if it is one zero one, then this bit will be one, this bit will be zero, and this bit will be one, and other remaining bit will be unused. That means zero. All will be like this bit will be zero and this bit will be zero. And if it is a positive number, then this bit will be zero. And if it is a negative number, then this bit will be one. And and remember that negative numbers are are, are stored in computer memory in two complemented form. So since I have a one byte memory allocation, eight bit. So uh, except the leftmost most significant bit, I have seven bits remaining to store my value. So for a bit for a byte type variable, it range becomes negative 2 to the power 7, that means negative 128 to, to negative, to positive 127, including 0. And if you understand one thing, then easier for other types. Like for other types, uh, like for, uh, if we go to the chart, okay. So if we go to the chart, for byte types, it takes one byte, for short type, it takes two bytes, and for integer type, it takes four bytes, and long type, it takes eight bytes. So as long as you have a more memory space, you can store larger values. So computer programmers need to understand and to know what kind of uh, data they will be using while writing a program, while developing a program, right? So in every program, we deal with some data, right? We, every program, in every program, we work with some data. And there is no program that does not deal with any kind of data, okay? So, programmers need to be wise in order to select a, a data type before declaring variables. Otherwise, there is a chance of misusing memory space, misusing their time. For instance, like, otherwise it, it, it doesn't happen. For instance, every time, if, like Java and uh, C Sharp, and most of the programming languages, they are type bind, you know, type, type bind. That means in order to declare a variable, you must decide what kind of variable you are going to declare. Whether it's an integer type or Boolean type or uh, string type. But there are some languages that are less coupled, less binded, like uh, Python. For it detects automatically for first time assigning values of the variable what kind of uh, uh, type should be, it assign automatically most of the time. Like for instance, if you go to a normal hotel or, uh, or motel, if you call their customer service or to go, to go to their help desk, and if you ask them, I need room, I need hotel room. You don't tell, I, do, I need one hotel room or two hotel rooms. You need, if you tell them, I need hotel room. Then it, definitely they will ask you how many rooms do you need, right? If you tell that I don't know, I don't know how many rooms I need. 
then definitely they may ask you another question that when do you need it tonight or in future or when then if you tell them i don't know when i need so then will you be able to get a room no because you are you are uncertain right you are uncertain okay but you see that so, so definitely similarly when declare variable you need to be certain what kind of how many rooms you need based on uh, like and for instance that if you are a single person if you, and if you go to a help desk of a hotel like hotel customer service and if you are on a room if you never even if you do not tell them i need one room definitely the hotel uh, manager or the help person should be intellectual enough that to understand that you are a single person so you need one room right for instance, if he or she gives you 10 rooms, okay, and bill for 10 rooms, will you be happy? No. That some programming languages, by looking the data size, they detect, can detect what kind of variable they need to declare, okay? But most of the programming languages like Java and C Sharp, they are type binded. You have to declare your type. This is programmer needs to be wise before uh, they declare other set, but there, in other ways, there is a possibility that you know uh, that uh, uh, misuse of memory because if you misuse memory, sometimes your program will uh, be slow. But for this, for, for, but for this kind of program, we will demonstrate in class the very short program. No matter, it will it will take few milliseconds to run this program. Okay, so. Uh, so even it takes few milliseconds more, then we will not be able to realize that this program is slower. Yes. This one. Yeah, maybe there is an option. Why is that option in technique? Mm. If, if can you want to please tell me that option that I can do it. Window? No. Click in the programming window? Yes. Click in the programming window. Okay. Control and cross. Control? Yes. Only control button itself and options. No, it does not work. No, no, it, it works for a uh, browser. No, it works for browser, but not, yes. You could try the magnifier application window. Bottom left. Window? So you go in Windows, the operating system? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> You're smart, I think. <laughs> Later, I will be able. I will see how to how to do that. Okay, okay. So, but okay. For the let us see for this program. Okay, so for this program, it has our byte type. So we know that the byte type has 128 maximum, right? So 127 maximum. So you see that we we exceed this range, then this compiler is is uh, like uh, Eclipse. Is sometimes it is intellectual that it automatically detects uh, the, that an error. But sometimes it may not be taken an error. So, is this why? Because I have exceeded the range, right? Maximum range and length I can be 127, right? And if I give 127, then it's fine. So, this program, by, by this program, I have shown here how to find the. Oh. Okay. How to find the byte at minimum and maximum value? Minimum and maximum value for this one. I want to exceed it because. Uh, uh, okay. So in this program, you see, I have I have shown how to find the min value, max value, and size. For byte byte type, it is size. You know, this byte is a class name, wrapper class. You maybe someone has heard about wrapper class. Okay, this is the wrapper class byte. So 
you have to type in byte b is in uppercase but for this type i i have to keep it type in lowercase okay so i have this program over here and then for the short type has two it has two uh, consecutive memory bytes so it has a better a larger number for integer it has four consecutive bytes so for the integer number the maximum maximum value could be this can be this okay but for instance look at for this this program sometimes for instance if i declare another variable integer like for instance equal to uh, value 3 equal to uh, 2 times value for instance okay that's good apparently this this seems good there is no error over here but okay but if we want to print this okay if we want to print this value 3 equal to value 3 equal to value 3 everybody knows this how why what i am writing over here so if you do not know this you have to spend some extra time these are these are supposed to be you, you are supposed to learn this in your cs1 class I will share this code. This code are available on my GitHub, so you can you can uh, download this. Okay, for let us see what happens if we run this program. For instance, uh, if I read to the upper bound of integer value, I put this value over here, and then if I run this program, what happens? Is my program right? Then look at the last line of the output. What is showing about value 3? Negative 2, is it the correct result? No. Then what happens? Yes. There is an overflow on this program, right? Because I have here, what is the mistake I have done over here? It says I have uh, declared integer type variable, okay, and value 3, but I multiplied value 2 by 2 over here, then value 2 will, will exceed is limit integer type limit so what is the way quick way to fix it okay so yes one of the way that i i can do i can do that uh, long and see maybe but still i have a problem over here will it run and will it show an actual result no okay yes I have to cast over here, type cast, I have to do uh, long over here. So this is the type, this is called type casting. Okay, now if I run, I expect to have my actual result. Okay, so uh, who uh, forget, so this is the type casting. If you do a Google search about type casting, then I can do this optional parenthesis, then it will be good okay so then i have oh, uh, what <coughs> okay so now but is, we need to know how to debug our program so I have done some research on debugging. I'm sorry. I have found that there is a positive correlation between programming and debugging. Positive correlation means, you understand positive correlation? That means if you are good in programming, then you will be good in debugging. And vice versa. If you are good in debugging, then you will be good in programming. So you need to be good parallelly in debugging. So if you are good in debugging, then, then definitely you will be good in programming. So let us see how do we debug our program. So here, so in order to debug our program, we need to give some, you know, uh, hmm, it's called breakpoint, just by double clicking here on, the, on this bar. So this is the breakpoint. I double click the breakpoint. Let me give some breakpoints over here, and here, and then here. Okay. So once I give it give some breakpoints, at least one, then I will run this program and I will 
debugging. Run command is control plus F11, but debug command is only F11. Or I can also run, run a debug as this command. I can also do this command. So whatever this command I get, no problem. It will uh, take me to the debugger window. So it is just showing me is, uh, whether I want to feel in, in debugging perspective. Perspective is a uh, that window pattern. Okay, so let me run with this. So this is the debugger window. It shows that at this point, as I set up a breakpoint, so it halt over here. It stopped over here, right? So when you drive, if there are some stop sign, you have to stop. So this is my stop sign. So now I, I can hear, so this, you see that until my stop point, these, these two lines are executed. Right? Now here at this point, I need to decide what I want to do. So if there are some options, if I click on the run button, I can do step into. Step into means going inside this, this line. If it is a method, it will go inside that method. Okay, and save over, if I do save over, save over means jumping this line. This line will be executed, and then it will show its result, and it will jump to the next line. Okay, so later I will show how to do step into, but let me do it quickly in six or step over. Step over, then this line will be executed, and this result is here. And then it again got stop point at this number number line number nine. Right? At this point, if I press again F6, so at, at this point here is here, if I hover my mouse on value one, it will not show me anything. Uh, uh, it will not it will not show anything, okay? But because this line is not executed yet. Once I press F6, then this line is has executed. Then once I bring my mouse pointer over here, right, it will show me what is my value, given value, and what is my value over here. This is value, given value, and this is expected value, okay, this value are same, so this is good. So let me do another F6, and now over here I can see F1, value 1, and value 2, but how about value 3? Over here, so over here, so still I am not seeing value 3, then I need to keep another F6. Okay, so now I can see value 3 of F6 is good, right? Is my expected value. But but when I did a mistake, like without this long, what will happen? So let me close the debugger, terminate the debugger, and debug it again by pressing F11. Then I am again here, let me see F6, press F6, 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 here at this point. You see, that I see my value 3, 2, right? Is this my expected value? No. So by doing this kind of debugging step, yes. So by debugging this way, so we we are able to find out the actual position where the error coming from. Okay. So you need to be skillful in debugging. Otherwise, sometimes you will see that your program is fine. Okay. So for apparently you will see that okay there is no error on this on this line. So if you are not until you are a big uh, like your skill programmer until you do not know about your day range of your data type, then it, it will be difficult for you to figure out that error is here on line number 12. Okay, so this is why I like you. So although this is not a part from your syllabus, I like you to please watch this video and get basic understanding of your of programming. Then it will be good for you. You will learn this one time and you will you will be benefited for whole life, even even after five years or ten years while you'll be working. You maybe you will be remember this. Okay, so then it has. If you please look at the video, I have a demonstrated character, float, and bubble type. 
so and I don't li don't like to spend my time by discussing these things. Okay, so you can watch it. You can watch this video, and then save your time or some my time. Okay, then according to syllabus, uh, there, there was a mistake that I was, I thought I have two weeks to review your uh, 1321 course, but I thought that I have only one week to review your course, your uh, 1321. So this is the last week, this is the last class, I have to review your uh, 1321 course content, there are a lot of course content, I don't know how to review and what are uh, or I needed to review, but I will try to give some guidelines about the next quiz in next class. Okay, so if you go, please uh, log in your uh, G2L system, then you will see I have made some changes in your syllabus, and then go to content, and then syllabus. Oh, I'm sorry. So another thing, do you like me to uh, like to put this video somewhere on D2L that you can come back and see this video again? Yes. yes. Okay. Please. Okay, thank you. So I, I want to do it here, but I wanted to also post on my, uh, on the YouTube channel, but some people say that uh, I'm concerned about that it may be a conflict of interest or something, maybe disclose something, private something, or I don't, I don't like to maybe Maybe I will not be able to put on YouTube channel, but maybe if I put on YouTube channel, I have to make it private. So uh, I will see that if, but if you want to see, if I put some videos on my YouTube channel as private, you need to send me an email from your university account, and you need to give me your Gmail account, so that I can add you to, I can share you my private videos with you. Otherwise, you will not be able to see my private videos on my channel, but you will be able to see only uh, public videos. But I will post these videos on, uh, on D2L system. And when I put something on D2L system, do you get any notification? You get any notification? When I uh, like, and then uh, what is the T-map? When I use T-map, I sometimes I send you, uh, what is that called? Uh, some videos and then some messages. Did you see my message on on TMAP? I did not see I have, uh, like many of your uh, messages on my on what is that called on Teams. So let us spend three minutes to be used to in Teams app. So everybody, please open and say something here on see this is your 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 channel. So team uh, CSC 1321 section B. So click over here and see. So once you open it, you see that I sent you some uh, some uh, I got a message from Brett. Who is that? Brett. Okay. Okay. So if I if I it's easy for me, if I say hi, then everybody will get it. In a second, right? So please, please spend three minutes to be used to. Yes, you. I think you do not need to create a, an account. You just accept my uh, invitation. Do you need to access? Do you get an account? Who, who, who have access? Who got? You got access? Team. Did you create an account? So then you don't need to create an account. You will just accept my uh, invitation. I already, once you added over there, right, I, I added most of you and the some of you added yourself. So then you should get a notification, uh, maybe in your university mail or somewhere, and just follow the uh, guidelines, just accept those, and then you will get, be able to run. So yeah, can anybody, everybody can please a minute and then send uh, send me or send someone else to a notification. Just say hi or hello or something. I okay. I got from Patrick. Thank you, Patrick. So I like you. Sometimes when you see something, some resource, 
useful on YouTube or on, on internet, please share it. Okay. Sometimes you know, I like I I like to learn from you. Okay. It's not that I know everything. Okay. So let us share uh, whatever whenever you find something important and related to this class or related to something. So please share here. Because it is easy for me to communicate on here on, on team than on looking at email. And because it's easy, really easy. Yeah. So everybody still in two more minutes and then uh, say, say, only everybody say hi, nothing else. <laughs> there is no more word than hi. Okay. So let us be used to in using this app and let us use it positively and then it will be easy for us to communicate even in so for some time when I upload some video and then then I, I will send you message over here. Uh, I got syllabus over here. You see that I have updated version 5 of the syllabus. So please uh, download this one and according to this syllabus, okay, <coughs> I have to complete by this week, okay, by this week I have to complete ARA and Thursday. Okay, I have 20 more minutes left. And I have to complete array and parsing algebra, parsing and sorting. Okay. I don't know, I, even I don't know what algorithm, there are many parsing and sorting algorithms. I don't know what are covered in 1321 class. Even. So I'm giving you a home, yes. No, quiz one actually, yes. Quiz one after this week. Yeah, before test one. Yes, the test one unless unless they they extend or they uh, defer test one, I have to complete my quiz one before this deadline, before uh, August thirty one. Maybe this that is the okay. Test one. Yes. It shows next to it, yes. Okay. Yeah, what, are we gonna what, what is covered on, on that exam? <laughs> next class I will I will explain, okay? What Still you don't know. What should we prepare over this weekend? Yes, so so for this weekend, so please be prepared to do some uh, study about arrays, hashing and sorting algorithm. Okay, well that one Because previously I didn't miss, I had a wrong syllabus I got, and then I put the syllabus of layout part over here. <laughs> previously. Yeah, I will, uh, so for the quiz, I can extend, but definitely I, I am asked to complete my quizzes before the test, because maybe some test question will be from uh, quizzes. Yes, sorting and uh, sorting and sorting at least and area. So maybe I can okay. So maybe it's not time, but uh, if I go to my GitHub account, yeah, is there a way that you can give us uh, like what like algorithms or whatever that you can use to study this specifically? Yeah, this is why still I do not know what are covered in in uh, thirteen twenty one class. It's just review of thirteen twenty one. CS1 class. Still, I don't know what to cover in 1321. But maybe I, I will try to get some information by next class and then we will discuss in next class.
okay but meanwhile in this weekend please everybody spend some time to learn the basic things that was some youtube videos and understand about the data type and especially how to use eclipse if you are work on java how to use eclipse and how to write project and put uh, save it in your github account and then uh, so you see how easy like for instance how easy for me i have made some changes on my project right now if i want to save these changes in my github project back so then what will happen for instance i will go to my project c s e then i will do like one minute like four commands git status the first one is the status check then it will see that these are the changes like these are the uh, red shows that these are the file i have changed i have changed so if i want to make these changes persistent or if i want to push these changes to my github account i need to add this but if i want to throw out my changes i need to do git checkout okay so then i will it's easy for me to uh check me maybe i can do something else maybe i can add one more program over here okay so for instance if i Close. Yeah, I have a debugger. I have to go to. Just I click over here, then it take me to E to E format. Maybe I can do. You see, I have a lot of I have a lot of other projects. You see, this is my uh, another project. It has maybe uh, <coughs> several hundred programs over here. So I can do. Okay, and then uh, maybe I can import that project as well. Really, this computer is faster. You know, it has a lot of projects. For instance, if I have, uh, I have array programs, right? You need array. Okay. For instance, this is an array program. Okay, this is an array program. So if I want to uh, save these programs from here. So I have to make this program from here to this project. Then easily I can do it. I can I can add another okay, then package add it. Okay. You see the program my program is running. I have added one file over here. Now if I go to my GitHub account. CD, uh, CD, um, CSE. You know, I'm doing quickly, but if you do some practice, you will be able to do quickly. So now, if I do git status command, you see that it is showing me that I have made some changes in my project, and I have also un one untracked, untracked folder or file. Untracked means just I added this array package, and I have not added it to it. Okay, so then the next command I can do git add dot. So then now if I check my status command, it will show all in blue, it's green color, right? So that means these are now tracked and these are added. So the next command is I have to do git commit. Git commit press dash m. Then I have to put added like array. So if I add something like for instance this, okay. So then, then as soon you see, as soon as I come here, so as soon as it, my program is replaced, it's showing me an up arrow right here. You see the up arrow, the corner over here. 
That means my uh, when I say make a commit, then submit. When I make a commit, that means shows my local project is ahead of my master one step ahead, one commit ahead. So then quickly then then you see then if I do one more step of commit or push, that is the last step of commit. That means get push origin master. This line says that I am pushing my code, origin means a remote project, and I am sending my code to the remote project, original project master branch. So then if I click enter, then you will receive within a few seconds, maybe it will ask my GitHub uh, login, uh, username and password. So my username is T S I T S and then uh, uh, maybe uh, maybe it will not maybe uh, maybe I don't have access to it. Okay, so then once I give my username and password, then you say master to master, that means my code, whatever I made change in this year, so my code has been added. Let me go to this project. You see, a second ago that I added my array package, and then I, I got nine commits over here. If I click on nine commits, you see that my I have committed this a few minutes ago. Two minutes ago. So then now, if I go to my project, you will see my all of my course over here. And now, if you download this code. If you clone this project, then you will be able to put your ad, your code. And then if I add you as a project owner, if I can add you as a collaborator. So uh, once I log in, once I sign in to my GitHub project, or this GitHub account, then you see that for my project, I can add you as a collaborator, as a collaborator. Anyone here uh, wants to be a collaborator of this? But needs my your git GitHub. You, you want to be a collaborator? Yes. Tell me your GitHub account. Please. E M I L Y T H E Second one, B is in what? Yeah. A. A. R. There you go. There you go. So, so as, as, as we type, type in it shows, right? <laughs> so then as soon as I add you as a collaborator, she will, you will get a notification, right? And, and then once you uh, accept that notification, then I will be able to see that it says that it's awaiting for uh, Emily's response. Can you please accept that one? Then it will be changed over here, accepted. So this way, by this way, I can add as many numbers of collaborator, collaborators in my project and this way we can work collaboratively. So whatever you will change, I will be able to see your changes and you will be able to push your course over here. If I refresh my code, okay, that's good. So you are here, right? Okay, congratulations. Anyone if you, if you want to uh, be added, please uh, let me know. Okay, so by the weekend, so by the weekend, please do some something, uh, do some uh, just reviews uh, about some searching, common, most common searching, and show sorting algorithm. Searching and sorting algorithm and array. Just three things to spend at least at least few hours to recap those three things. Okay, anyone has any any more uh, question or concern? Okay.
Okay. Oh, there is a there is a web version, uh, desktop app. There is a desktop version of this uh, this thing app. If you want, you can uh, download the desktop app. But I like that. Uh, mm. Anyone has anything to say?